I didn't even know what I didn't know. A few days ago, Harley Davidson flew me and nine other moto vloggers out to the Mojave Desert to test ride their new Pan America. And holy heck is it a lot of bike for a first time short ADV rider. I learned so many things while I was there and I definitely want to share because it's fresh in my mind and I think all these lessons will definitely help a new and inexperienced ADV rider out. Thank you Duchess for your fanfare in the background. You may occasionally hear him in the video. Sorry about that. He's having a good day eating his seed. So thank you to Harley Davidson for this wonderful learning opportunity and the opportunity to fall and get back up again. So we were in the Mojave Desert for three days. So the first day that we got there, we were just all around the main conference hall, kind of talking to the other rider coaches, talking about our previous ADV experience, talking about the Pan America, and just generally hanging out with all the other cool motor vloggers that were there. And that first night, I also learned my very first lesson. One of the coaches there was talking to me about the importance of pre-medicating. What they mean by that is basically take some ibuprofen or some kind of anti-inflammatory before you go out there for the whole day, because if you're gonna be training an ADV riding, in the desert all day, you will be sore by the end of the day. It's a very active riding style. In fact, at Sakaar, the facility we were at, they had a whole medicine shelf with just like a bunch of things you could possibly need before and after your ride. So before I got on the bike, I would take two ibuprofen and that seemed to help me a lot during the day. So that was lesson number one, pre-medicate. The very next day we started our training exercises and I learned another very important lesson and that is that you will drop the bike. And that's okay, they're meant to be dropped. In fact, I was kind of looking to dropping my bike so that I could get it out of the way early in the day, which is what I did, so good for me. That kind of took the pressure off the rest of the day. And I'm happy to say that all 10 of us didn't make it without dropping our bikes by the end of the first day. But along the same lines, we also had to learn what happens when you drop your bike. So we did a training exercise where we learned how to properly pick up a motorcycle. And if you're a short rider like me, the Pan America is a heavy bike. It's like 560 something pounds or something close like that. Especially if you're in gravel where you don't have that great of attraction on the ground. You'll see as I was trying to lift the bike up off the ground, you could see my feet slipping in that gravel and I dropped it right back down. But the key to actually performing this lift is to have somebody be a counterweight on the other side of the bike so that when you're lifting it, there's a little more leverage to tip the bike to the other side. It makes it easier for you. And I remembered the coaches telling me to lift with my legs and look up at the sky. So that's what I tried to do. And I did end up getting it, so that made me feel good. So another lesson to be learned here is that if you're gonna do ADV riding, you'll need to <gasps> have friends. I know, shocking. It's actually very much a safer thing to ride with somebody else when you're going adventure riding, especially if you drop your bike and you can't lift it, or if you're riding in an area where you kind of have spotty cell reception or no cell reception at all. For example, while we were riding in some parts of the Mojave Desert and some of these mountains and canyons, there was absolutely no cell reception at all. So if you went down there by yourself, you would have nobody to call or to help you get your bike back up again if you can't do it. But the good news is that the ADV and off-road market is expanding, so you're likely to find some friends if you decide to be an ADV rider. Okay, this next thing is disgusting, but I did not know how smelly how smelly ADV gear can get by the end of the day. Oh my God. Now I was wearing some awesome ADV gear with ventilation that Revzilla sent out to me and I'll link the gear I was wearing down below. But even with the ventilation under that hot sun all day, there was not a single cloud in the sky and we were sweating. Gear held up great, even through me dropping the bike and going down, but oh my God, did it get smelly. I mean, like definitely keep all those vents open and take some spray deodorant with you if you can. When we got back to the Zakar facility, the first thing I did was jump in the shower because I felt like one of those cartoon characters, you know, where they're walking by and there's like a smelly green trail of gas protruding from their body because they smell really bad. Yeah, that was me. Oh my God. I don't know if I'd be the type of ADV rider that can do like camping for like six days straight. Oh my God. I was talking to one of my friends who does things like this regular and he's like, yeah, by the third day, you just kind of get used to it. But oh my God, that would be a horrible three days. Okay, let's move on from the smell. I'm already getting PTSD just thinking about it. The next thing I learned is that you're gonna be pretty much riding ADV bikes standing up the entire time. It's a very active form of riding. This is because you have pressure receptors on your feet that help you keep your balance. If you're sitting down, you don't activate those pressure receptors, but you also ride it standing because you need to let the bike move under you when you're riding over rough terrain. I did it, you guys. First time. That was exhilarating, you guys. Oh my, and I only wanted to sit down once. What? And on that same note, I also learned that turning is very different on an ADV bike than it is on a street bike, like what I'm used to riding. On a street bike, like you see in MotoGP, you have to lean towards the inside of the turn. On an ADV bike, if you lean towards the inside of the turn as you're going over rocky terrain, you're gonna wash out your front tire and you're gonna go down. 
So on an ADV bike, I learned you have to shift your body weight to the outside peg. That'll maintain all your weight over the contact patch of the bike so that your tire doesn't wash out. I think learning to turn properly on an ADV bike was my favorite part of all the lessons we did because it was so counterintuitive to what I wanted to do compared to a street bike. But I also learned about the importance of not looking down at all while you were riding. Keeping your eyes up was a general rule of thumb for also helping you maintain your balance. If you look down at the ground in front of you, it's much harder to maintain a balance because you have everything that's going by you really quickly and you can't maintain like a fixed frame of reference that tells you how off balance you are. But if you look at the horizon, that would give you a good frame of reference. While I was riding, I had to keep telling myself, eyes up, look at the rider in front of you. In fact, by the end of the training session, I had actually made up a song for it. And whenever I would get nervous, I would start singing it. And it would just remind me to keep my eyes up. Okay, this next one is a weirdish one and it's nothing that the coaches taught me. It's just something that helped me while I was personally riding. So needless to say, this was my first time on an ADV bike and it's a 1250cc 560 pound motorcycle. Like it's a big bike for a five foot four, 120 pound rider. I don't think it's something most new ADV riders would think to start on. So the learning curve for me was really steep. And yeah, I was kind of nervous, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, we just finished our hill climbing experiment now we're all I guess just waiting for instruction I'm not gonna lie I, I was scared I went through that course the first time and I made it up the first hill made it up the second hill came down no problem and then they had us go do some of these like little bumpy bump things I don't know what to call them and uh, I almost I almost lost it I didn't drop it but it just scared me deep breaths here we go Practice some more. But something odd that I found myself wanting to do whenever I got nervous or scared was just to start singing and smiling inside my helmet. If you're riding and you feel yourself getting anxiety or tense or just stressed out, just start singing to yourself. Sing something you like. I was kind of alternating between my keep your eyes up song, song about the scenery around me and the bike that I was riding, and also Highway to Hell by ACDC. Like I would find myself looking up ahead and seeing a turn coming up and I would just be like, I'm on the highway to hell. When I'm riding, I typically will ride with my uh, Cardo Bluetooth headset. So I've got any music that I want inside of that. But because this time I had a new ADV helmet, I didn't transfer all my stuff from my street riding helmet to that helmet. So I didn't have music to ride with. So I just had to make up my own music. I was really mentally exhausted by the first day of training and also by the second day when we actually went up into the desert and the mountains. It was interesting because I wasn't physically tired even though it's a demanding activity, but mentally I was tapped out. And I think the singing definitely helped and I think I understand now why all those sailors would sing sea shanties when they were doing long voyages at sea. I get it, I get it now. It is good for the morale. I'm always thankful for any opportunity I get to become a better rider. And if you want more riding tips and hacks, you can check out this video I did about how to stay safe during a crazy group ride. Until next time, Spicy Squad. Me and Lolly, shade tree surgeon and Lolly in the desert riding Harley Davidson in America's baby. Can you imagine a more dynamic duo?